Hey guys, Matt here from Wrecked Brewery. Happy Homebrew Wednesday to you. So this is my watermelon wheat. It's probably been in the bottle for a week and a half or so. And this is my sample, so I wanted to try it out. It's gonna be a real short video this week. It's just, um, all I did earlier today was I, uh, uh, I kegged or transferred that uh, red pilsner. So more to come on that in a second. And I know this is not the proper glass for a wheat beer. This is probably not nice for a darker beer or a, a nice strong beer or a stout or something. Uh, but I, I found it at the thrift store. It was 50 cents, the Duval glass. So I thought it was pretty cool. So new glass, I wanna, I wanna give it a whirl. Got a nice hiss on it. Oh, look at that. Oh yeah, that's got a lot of good carbonation in there. <laughs> maybe a little bit too much sugar. Oh, maybe it was good that I picked the big glass for this. Very, very happy beer. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to give that a moment to, to die down. I think I probably could have put a bit less uh, priming sugar in there. I guess the, I guess the watermelon uh, in there uh, maybe has a little bit of residual sugars or something in it. Because I just put, I just put the standard amount of um, of priming sugar I would in many wheat beer, but I guess touch too much for this one. Uh, so while we wait for this to die down, um, actually hold on a second. Try to gingerly pour the rest of this in there. There we go. Leave the rest behind because it was bottle conditioned. So that has a nice, nice wheat color uh, there. It's a nice sort of. Um, it's not real clear. It's it's a bit foggy. Wheat beer. My phone's going off. Everybody wants to get hold of me now. Um, but anyway, so yeah, this is the watermelon wheat. Hmm. Very. Very watermelon presence in the aroma. That's exactly what I was going for. Let's just hope that it's not too strong in the taste because that's, you know, what I'm trying to go for is I want the watermelon to be present, um, but not like, you know, you're drinking like a Jolly Rancher or something. So here we go, cheers. Okay. Yeah, very high carbonation. Probably more than I would have liked on this. The high carbonation is, is masking the taste a little bit, but the watermelon is definitely present. It doesn't seem like it's too overpowering. It's probably at the limit I would have put it. I could have probably did with a little bit less. So what I did with this, I did the standard eight cups of watermelon juice as I always do. And then I, all, I usually top it off at bottling time with a little bit of the watermelon extract to kind of preserve the flavor. Because the watermelon juice, it's just, it's just water essentially. I mean, it'll, it'll die out over time. Um, the, the watermelon extract seems to keep that edge there and it, it keeps it around for a while longer, for, for a few months. Um, probably could have dialed back a little bit on that. Normally I put in about an ounce. I think I did two ounces this time. Uh, just to get a little bit more prevalent. But it's very good. Um, the high carbonation is keeping me from, from wanting to, to tr drink it quickly, so maybe that'll dissipate over a little bit of time. But other than that, um, this is a great refreshing beer. It's not real strong. I think it was 5% is what it came out to. I don't have a label on this one. I actually ran out of labels. Uh, but yeah, good beer. That's that's going to come out real nice. I mean, it's late late in the summer. But I did brew it this year like everybody wanted me to, so I, I made sure to get that out. And the water profile I put on this, that, that worked out. That definitely enhanced it from the last time I made it. The last time I made this beer, I didn't do any water treatment. So that was that was good. Definitely an improvement there. Um, so just to, you know, we'll keep this uh, video uh, kind of short, hopefully. Basically what we did today, we just, we just transferred the Red Pilsner from the SS Brewtech uh, uh, brew bucket. First time using it, uh, used the, uh, uh, the bouncer just to try that out. I've worked out real nice. So I'll show you a clip at the end of this. And uh, I did have to fix the keg though. The, the keg had an issue with the poppets. This is one of the standard poppets, uh, just with the you know with the little feet on there. I'm assuming the gasket on this probably wore out or something. One of the the, the gas or the the beer side was leaking from the poppet. So I just I replaced all the gaskets because I you know I figured you know what it has been a while since I've done on that keg. So I replaced the lid seal. I replaced the uh, the standoff seals. 
and both poppets. I got the universal poppets. Uh, I don't have any extras. I probably should have bought some extras where I, I would show you. They don't have the feet on them. They're more like a, just like a cone shape, uh, just like you know, a spring sort of that just sits there is what it looks like. So uh, as a matter of fact, as I'm looking at this, the one poppet is a bit crooked standing there. So maybe that's, uh, maybe that's the issue. Maybe it got bent or something. But anyway, all is good. It's, it's sealed. Um, you'll see in the video that I was transferring the sanitizer over. Uh, I actually left the sanitizer in there for probably a good two or three days. I wanted to make sure that it stayed under pressure and there was no leaks. And I just forgot about it, honestly, after, after the first day. And it was fine. So I don't have, I don't have to worry about the beer, uh, you know, uh, leaking out. So but anyway, that's really it. I'm going to show you the footage of that. That's all we have this week. Uh, hopefully next week I'll be brewing the Marzen beer that I have planned up. My, my take on it on the Oktoberfest. So uh, we'll see you guys next week. Have a happy Hunger Wednesday, everybody. And cheers. We're getting the keg ready for the uh, Red Pilsner. So... The one on the right is the keg that I had to fix. Had some issues with one of the poppets. And uh, had it filled with sanitizer. Actually, the last couple of days I just forgot about it. So I'm now draining it now out of this keg and putting it back in my sanitizer keg. The blue one I used to store sanitizer. And uh, just cheating using my bottle wand. So just coming straight out of the tap and just pouring right in there with the bottle wand. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Thing out. So first time using the SS brew bucket. It's 40 degrees, just came out of the uh, cold crash. And we're trying a couple of firsts here. Got that French pack first. And we're also going to try out this uh, bouncer. So everything's sitting in the starter stand. Does have a, a arrow on there, directional flow. So uh, it's got a little short tube for the brew bucket side. And what's nice is this this tubing I've noticed will fit on both of these sides. I think this is the five sixteenths. Uh, So what's nice about this is this size fits onto uh, the, uh, man, I'm thinking straight today, right onto the bouncer, both sides, as well as the brew bucket. So that's really handy. And then it's the same size. I can't remember when I uh, I can't remember how I put this. I believe the way I put this in here with that that racking arm that's in there. I believe I put it in where if I turn it clockwise, so we don't loosen it. I believe I have it set so when I turn it clockwise, it'll be facing the right direction. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we'll let it flow as long off the top so we don't cause a vacuum. So let's see what we have. Well, we have a little bit of trouble that went through there, I saw. So that might have been, the racking arm might be in the wrong direction. But hopefully the bouncer caught that. We'll find out when we're, when we're done transferring. very clear you see the reflection inside the kettle so that settled out nicely and uh, there's the bouncer at work you can see it flowing so yeah we'll fill up this keg and see what we have uh, at the end that bouncer should have caught that first start of trub and I guess we'll find out when we're done racking here uh, what position that arm was in 
So maybe it's aiming too far down towards the east. So I think I see what might have happened there. So yeah, I had it right. I turned it and it was facing the right direction. But I think, um, I don't know, maybe anybody else that has a brew, brew bucket can, can tell me here. But I think, uh, I don't know, maybe because the racking arm would have been, so it would have been straight up in the air uh, during fermentation. I don't know if that's the correct position to be during fermentation or if it should have been lower. So maybe that's what we got. We, we, we probably didn't get the yeast at the bottom of the, of the, uh, the, the conical piece here. We probably more just got the um, whatever was settled in the bottom of that tube that couldn't get out. So maybe I should set it more sideways uh, in there during fermentation. But anyway, there you go. Full keg. And uh, now we lager. For now, I just hooked it up to the party tab just so I can take a sample. There's probably a little bit of star sand still left in this line. I'll just go ahead and dump that. Not going to be carved yet, but it'll be cold. There it is. The red Pilsner. It's not quite red, it's probably more copper. But hey, that's good enough for me. I was going for something different and I sure got it. So, uh, yeah, it looks, it looks a bit cloudy, of course, because we just transferred it and all, so we'll let it finish settling now. Oh, it smells like a nice, clean Pilsner. Nothing real fancy about the smell on that. Cheers. That's delicious. I didn't go too crazy with the hops on this. I did mess up the hop schedule a bit, but apparently that, that didn't really matter. It's not too bitter. It's gonna be real nice. So I'll let it I'll let it lager there for a good week and uh, take another sample. Try again.